Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another unboxing for Our Need, a cooperative comic book action game for one to two players. So this is a standalone expansion for the regular Our Need called Gemming Ice. Uh, this is uh, a Kickstarter exclusive. Um, it might be available on the Blacklist game site, um, or you might find it in a uh, secondhand market. Um, but just a heads up, so just, it was listed as a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, but it's possible you could pick this up, just play it by itself if you see it cheaper. Um, and because it is Kickstarter exclusive, I'm not going to go into a ton of stuff on all the rules and all that. Check out my base game video um, to see more of that stuff. So, Gemming Ice, the, like all the other uh, expansions for this game, which are two-player full expansions... They do have a full rule book, which explains how to play the game, so you're not required to buy anything else. Um, has all its own different villains, its issues, its maps, all that stuff. Um, so there are all of those things, and there's just going through that. We're not gonna, again, we're not going to spend too much time on that. We also have our issue guide, uh, which will explain what our different issues in the game are we're going to play. So first up, we have Shattered World. Is a complexity of one. And then our story text. And then we have Burning Heart, which is a complexity of two. Which is a special villain. And then we have our hero and villain page, which will go over our couple of heroes. So first we have Gem, who's a three-star complexity. So this is... Uh, all the base game characters were one star, except for one of them was two star. And then I think even the expansions, everyone only went to two. So I think he's our first three star complexity character. Um, and then we have Ice, who's a level two. So if you're thinking about picking up this game first, and then Astra, who's our villain, is a level two. This is probably not the one to start with. I would recommend starting with either the base game or Judging Jury, which is the regular retail uh, release, just because they have easier villains, easier characters to understand um, until you learn how to play the game, and then you can pick up this one later on if you find it. Um, but if you don't, you just jump in. The game's not that hard. We'll go through the characters to see what they are. Um, so here's all our different tokens. Um, different thugs, different regular special enemy tokens, our issues, uh, focus, damage, stuff like that. And we will look at our board. So this is the map that we play on. Um, so this one takes place like in a solar, so this is the Shattered World, so you have our different, uh, locations, um, now, this one's actually kind of interesting because they have these special symbols on here, uh, which link from one area to the next. Um, so, they probably have some different meaning. Does it specify in the issue guide what those are? Usually, that's where they specify that stuff. So that just says here, enemies ignore the effects of those spaces, so um, there must be something on one of the, one of the cards that say what those do. Uh, so yeah, you're going to want to watch out, watch out for them, so there are some different issues there. Um, then the other side, we have the uh, Burning uh, Heart, which has sort of an Arctic feel to it, um, and some different other things, like some bases and stuff. Um, yeah, some different, different maps. Again, they're all very similar. It's the steam panels that make them different than each other. Alright, so let's see what we got. We have, of course, our clue cards. Which, if you watch the other videos, these are going to be the same as everything else. Villain sightings, tale of evidence, or trial of evidence, weak points, point of interest, encouraging leads. Hacked comms, local assistance, time to spare, shared intel. Basically, they're going to get you one or two dice, and they let you do stuff like solve, attack, um, heal damage, gain two focus. They're the exact same ones that are in every other set. There's nothing different. So I don't want to spend a ton of time going through each one. We, of course, also get our 
four bases and our six or our five dice, not six dice for some reason. Um, I also just show off this because each card has a set of dividers. I did show this in the other videos. Is they just sit over the top of the box just a little bit. So they're probably not going to fit standing up in this particular box. Uh, the core box is a little bit taller. Um, also, they might fit with a divider if you have a tight, div or not divider, with sleeves, if you have tight sleeves. But check out my um, Kickstarter add-on videos, and I'll do an uh, end of that video. I'll show off what everything looks like in a box together. Alright, so we're going to hop in and get to the heart of this. You want to see it is the characters and the cards. So we're going to start off with Ice. Um, so like all the other games, every character in here kind of has an analogy to like a main... Um, a main or IP character, a DC or Marvel character. Um, so this is our Ice character. He's very much Cyclops, as you can tell. But he has ice powers like Iceman. Uh, which is an interesting mix between those two. So Ice has um, 12 health, 1 inflict, 3 problem solve. Cool headed. You cannot play your equipment cards normally. Each equipment card explains how they may be played. Exhaust. Either return one equipment card from your discard pile to your hand or choose a hero to draw a card. And then if we focus him, he gets uh, two inflict or two damage, two problems, well equipped. Activate attack gaining plus one die for each equipment card you have in play. Then flip this card or exhaust to, to heal two damage. So he's got special equipment. So he has two copies of uh, Hyparex Visor. Constant and it's an equipment. When you would gain a focus, you may instead play this card. Exhaust. During your attack, you may target within you may target a space within five spaces of you. Um, he has cryomance cryomag bracers. Uh, when you would draw a card, you may play this card instead. Gain one die when you attack actions. Exhaust, discard your top card of your deck to gain one focus. Then you may discard this card. To draw the discarded, you may discard this card to draw that discarded card. Uh, he has a fusion energy belt, uh, which is also equipment. You may, during your move action, you may instead only move up to two spaces to play this card. At the start of each hero turn, gain one focus. Uh, exhaust. When you spend a focus to convert, um, when you spend a focus to convert your focus token into a success, add one additional success to the roll. Then you may discard this card to add one BAM to the roll. Um, so it's kind of funny. It costs him little things to get his equipment out, but then he can also discard them for bigger effects. He's got uh, Flash Freeze. Instant, you may defeat up to two minions in the nearest scheme panel and then solve. He's got three copies of Cold and Calculated. You may search your deck for an equipment card, then draw it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. You may then choose a hero to attack or solve. Three copies of Trained Commander. Each hero may heal one damage and gain one focus and draw one card. Two copies of Arctic Bridge. Instant, each hero may, within three spaces of you may move up to six spaces each. And then three copies of Cold Snap. There's an instant you may attack, gaining plus one die if you have uh, the height Hyperx Visor in play. After rolling a dice, you may discard that, gaining additional die. So again, it works with discarding his items to uh, get some bonuses. Alright, then we have Gem. Who's gonna, this is a little bit more complex character. Um, so Gem is going to have a special Trin Trinity token reference card. It says, place this card nearby for reference with each of his three tokens on it. Special, each time you play a constant card, move one Trinity token from this card to that card, depleted side up. 
Uh, so it has an active and inactive side token. Each time one of your constant cards is discarded, move that card back to this card. So you have basically three energy crystals that you use to charge up your special cards. And then as they're used up, they go back to this kind of like to recharge back on your character. Uh, so each time you charge a turn your token, flip it to its charge side. Each time you deplete it, flip it to its depleted side. You cannot deplete a token that's already depleted. You can only charge or deplete tokens on constant cards. Token this card are neither charged nor depleted. Um, and then here is his miniature. So I would link him to being very much like a um, Green Lantern um, esque character, not necessarily Green Lantern. Um, uh, more like Doctor Spectrum, if you're familiar with the Squadron Supreme. This just got these energy energy crystals you can use to like charge up various powers. Um, so it's kind of like a mixture of those types of characters. Um, she has 10 health, 2 attack, 2 solve. Gleam's Chosen. Um, this is where he gets a little bit more difficult because he has his tokens, plus he has special Gleam effects as well. Uh, attack or action, deplete 1 Trinity token to reveal a card from your hand and resolve its Gleam effect. Exhaust, charge 1 Trinity token and move. His focus, he gains one extra attack. Alignment. When this card is flipped, charge each Trinity token. If you ever have no charge tokens, flip this card. Exhaust. Deplete one Trinity token to reveal a card from your hand and resolve its gleam effect. So he's got two copies of Visions of Mythora. Constant. After a hero rolls a die, you may deplete the Trinity token on this card. To treat up to three focus as success results. Exhaust. Either gain one focus or discard one focus to charge the Trinity. Uh, two copies of Ionic Vengeance. Um, so he's got one, one of the three in his, uh, each of his hands and then one in his chest. Um, before heroes attack, you may deplete Trinity tokens on this card for the hero to gain one die. Exhaust. After you defeat an enemy, choose a hero to draw a card. You've got three copies of Cosmic Congruence. Anytime you may deplete a Trinity token on this card to heal three damage. Exhaust. You may move one space for each charge Trinity token. Then if you have no charge tokens, you may charge one token. Got three copies of Unify, so this will have them gleam effects. Charge one Trinity token. If unable, each hero draws a card. Or if you spent the other ability to just do the gleam from its hands, each hero may gain one focus and draw a card. Four copies of Belief and Bounce. Charge one Trinity token to deal two damage to an enemy and place two justice on any problem. Or Gleam, solve or attack, targeting any space and gaining one extra die. Three copies of Ebb and Flow. For each hero within four spaces of you, that hero that suffered damage, charge one Trinity token to heal two damage from each of those heroes. Then if you have no charge tokens, each hero may move and draw one card. Uh, Gleam, each hero may move and then either heal three or gain two focus. And then three copies of Prismatic Constructions. Or Constructs, not Constructions. Constructs. At instant uh, attack. Targeting X spaces within six spaces of you. X equals the number of charged Trinity tokens. Um, Gleam, deal one damage to each nearby enemy for each charged Trinity token. So yeah, he's kind of different because you have to have these tokens out to charge up his. Uh, to be charged, you'll be able to use his abilities. Um, then you spend them. And it's a little back and forth. Um, so again, yeah, I'd recommend trying one of the other characters first. Um, so here's our villain, is Astra. If I can get her out of the box. Very cool miniature there. Um, I also like in this game, overall, how 
there's a lot of um, female characters. Uh, most of our villains have been female. Uh, over half of the heroes have been female. Um, but it's also the fact they did include heroes. There, there are lots of games that start having female characters and it's like, everyone's a female. It's like, okay, I, I get it. We want more women represented in games. But, like, when you do it at the sake of having no male characters, it's kind of like, you know, now you're just doing the exact opposite. Um, so this actually has a pretty good bounce between the two. I just like that there's a bunch of different uh, female superheroes. They aren't just, um, you know, babe in bikini. You know, none of, actually, I don't think any of them are really skankily clad at all. So it's kind of nice. Um, well, like, I mean, a different uh, aesthetic, I should say. So you have uh, Astasia, she has six uh, problem per player, two inflict. Each hero takes the top card of their deck, places it face down near this card. Each face down hero card near this card is considered banished. Uh, special rule, when a hero is instructed to banish a card, the hero takes the top card of their deck, places it face down near this card. Each time a hero would draw a card, they may instead discard one focus to draw one of their banished cards. So you'll limit your deck. Uh, 18 health per player, 1 defense, 3 inflict. Dark power. Uh, Astasia gains plus 1 inflict value for each banished card belonging to target hero. So, you could just be like, ah, it's banished, I can deal with 1 or 2, but the problem is she inflicts more. So you're going to have to basically keep spending your focus to draw them cards so you don't have to worry about that. Activate Inflict. If unable to inflict, each hero must either suffer two damage or banish a card. All right, then her allies are gonna be the Shard Eaters, the Lackeys. Uh, five health, one defense, three Inflict. Uh, they're gonna be these crazy, goopy, oh, I dropped him. He's like, Goofy boar, not goofy, goopy boar characters. They're like metal in there. There's eyeballs. Um, yeah. Weird. Alright. They're gonna have five health, one attack, or one defense, three inflict. Crawling shadows, activate. Move three and inflict. Then the farthest hero from this enemy must either discard one focus or banish a card. And then Dark Rift, 4 Problem, Disruption, Activate, each hero must either discard one focus or banish a card. Then each hero suffers one damage for each banished card belonging to them. And then we have, so yeah, just plays around with them banishing cards a lot. So we have our three of those. And then we have our different um, minion activation cards. We have a Sinister Shadow. Um, the other thing I love about the artwork on here, so it's like, so she's in this set, but she's fighting Majesty from the base game, um, and they keep including villains and characters from different sets in some of the other ones. Like, at least like one card here or there, so it makes it, again, feel like it's a world where all these heroes are together, um, instead of just being like, oh, these guys are in this box set, they only interact with the characters from this box set. Um, so I like that. Um... So search for shadows, especially you must either discard one focus or banish a card. Showdown. Astro gains plus one defense for each bash card belonging to attacking hero. We have the Curse of Mexar. We have the three regular, and then we have the two doubles. Uh, each hero suffers one damage for each bash card belonging to them. Each hero with no bash cards must either suffer one damage or banish a card. Showdown. After this attack, each hero suffers one damage for each bash card belonging to them. Uh, four copies of Grip of Despair. Um, ploy. Showdown. After this attack, you must either discard two focus or banish a card. Then Astrid puts each hero with one or more car banished cards. He's got Four copies of Feeding Off Fear. Uh, especially either Banish a card or Ash to Capture Bystander. After this attack for each bystander on the map, you must either banish a card or that bystander is captured. Two copies of Vile Summoning. 
Um, Showdown immediately activate the Lacking Years to Astasia. If no Lacky is in play, draw the top most Lacky from the discard pile. And then her spe her signature special is uh, Mix a Wrath of Mexar, which is traits. Uh, I think they messed up on that. I think that might have been supposed to say something else. Uh, special, if Anastasia is inflicted while resolving this card, you must either banish a card. Otherwise, each hero must suffer 3 damage or banish a card. Showdown, Anastasia immediately inflicts each hero. Each hero who suffers 2 or more damage during this inflict must banish a card. Alright. So there was our villain. So then we're going to jump into our two. Alright, Shattered World, which is our first issue. Uh, remove kept the sales from the issue that's placing in the steam panel. Special rules. Each time a hero moves, they might discard one issue token they control to ignore the, I don't know, we'll call them like star spaces uh, during the movement. Um, oh, it's a shattered space. Each each symbol is a shattered space. Each time a hero moves to a shattered space, that hero must suffer two damage or discard one random card from their hand. If there are ever four active issue tokens in a steam paddle, the villains have transmitted the location of parody shard and the heroes lose. Tip the scale. Issue tokens on a steam paddle are beacons. Issue tokens controlled by heroes are shuttle fuel. Each time a hero each time after the villain advances, each hero in the villain's new steam panel must either suffer two damage or flip an inactive issue token on that steam panel. Each time an issue token would flip in the steam panel, a hero may discard two focus to prevent that from flipping. Uh, action flip an active issue token on your steam panel to its inactive side or gain one issue token. Crisis flip one inactive issue token on its, to its side. Alright, our, our panels are going to be Orbiting Eyes. Activate. Flipping Issue Token in uh, Scepter 1 to its active side. If unable to, discard one focus for each active issue token. And now that activated ability is going to be the same for each uh, scene, just with different, its different location. So here we have Crest, which is an enemy. 12 health, 0 defense, 3 inflict. This card is flipped, place the crest token in the empty space nearest to the mithril mines. Um, activate, inflict, targeting you, then move three spaces away to the nearest hero. The palace ruins. Which will become the royal map. You are carrying the royal map. It is considered to be in your space. Active, flip one inactive issue token on a steam panel. The Mysterium Mines, which will have some Grail Agents, um, 3 at health, 0 defense, 4 inflict. When this card is flipped, place each Grail Agent token on this card. Each time a Grail Agent is defeated, place it on this card, and the hero that defeated it gains a clue. Active, place one Grail Agent in a Steam Panel with no Grail Agent. If unable to, flip the inactive issue token on a Steam Panel. With a Grail Agent. I'm guessing Grail is kind of supposed to be like the Shield slash Nova type characters for like space. Uh, Hanger controlling the skies. And, uh, oh this is our red one. This probably should have been the first one. I hate when they put, they have these stacked in here the wrong direction. Um, destabilize the surface. When this card is flipped, each hero gains one issue token. After performing a move, heroes must either discard one of their issue tokens or suffer one damage. Activate each hero discards one of their issue tokens or suffers two damage. Alright, our regular cards we have uh, for Blingus, if Crest is in place, she immediately inflicts each hero dealing plus one damage for each inactive token in a steam panel, otherwise the villain steams. Two copies of Cryptic Directions. The hero carrying the royal map must discard one card they control or discard one of their issue tokens. Um, if unable to do either, discard all your focus. If no hero is carrying the royal map, the villain schemes. 
the parity protocols. If Grail Agents is in play, place one Grail Agent in a Steam Panel with no Grail Agents. Then each Grail Agent inflicts, otherwise Steam. Then we have Magic Attack Hex. If destabilized surface is in play, each hero must either discard one of their issues or suffer four damage or the Steam. And then we have Crisis. Alright, then our other issue is going to be Burning Heart, which is going to play very differently. Um, so set up, remove Solar Pain from the issue deck, place in the issue play. Place the Solar Pain token on the uh, I don't know, deck to building, it's some sort of like temple. Um... I wish sometimes they just tell you what those are called or what they want. Some some reference what they're called, some don't. Um, I'll just call it a temple. Place one issue on each other temple. Special rules. Each time a hero enters a temple, they may gain one issue token in that space. Each steam panel can only have a maximum of five damage. If a six damage would incur, place a crisis occurs. Uh, ac action. Discard one damage from your steam panel, then you may place one of your issue tokens on a temple with no issue tokens to discard one additional damage from your steam panel. If each steam panel has five damage tokens, the villain has melted the ice planet of Xing and the heroes lose. So here's our special solar packs. The special enemy. Well, he has five health. But she has zero defense and two inflict. This card cannot be defeated. Each time Solar Pain enters a temple, she discards one issue token. And that token deals one damage to the steam panel nearest to her. Um, so she's trying to move from each area to each area to do five damage. Melt. Place X damage on the steam panel nearest to Solar Pain. X equals her remaining health. Then if Solar Panel heals two damage and moves to the issue token nearest to her. Crisis plays one damage on a steam panel with the least amount of damage. So our first area is the Frigidora Station. It says activate, uh, it says fire below, activate, discard one of your issue tokens and, or place one damage on Frigidora Station. And then she gets these special cards. She, this one has 10 health uh, and plus one inflict. Wiggles Grief, activate, place one damage on each steam panel. Cryo Waltz. And that flips over. Gives her an additional plus one inflict. Um, activate. Place one damage on each enemy or each steam panel. And then we have Smoldering Crater. Discard one of your tokens. Place a damage. Um, plus 10 health and plus one inflict. Place one damage on each steam panel. Misdirected Wrath. And then finally, Frozen Core, Matters of the Heart. And then, Burn Before, um, activate one thing. So what she does is, as you defeat these different Steam Pilots, these flip over and basically they increase her power. Either they give her more health or they give her more inflict. Um, so she can do more damage. But if you can manage to deal the amount of uh, steaming to each card... Um, or health to it, depending on which one it is, either steaming or health, you can defeat that card, and then she loses those extra stats. Um, and that should help weaken her. Otherwise, she only has 5 health normal. This gets her up to more health. Um, she has 2 copies of I Can Bring Him Back. Place 1 issue token on a temple with no issues, if able. Heal 2 damage from a Widow's Grief, if unable, steam. Uh, Scorching Rubuk. Uh, place one issue token on a temple with no issues. If able, discard two justice from heated words. If unable, steam. So, out of my way, place one issue token on there. If not able, otherwise, each hero must discard one damage from misdirected wrath or suffer four damage. It is not steam. And then, two copies of never again. Place one issue token on there with no issues. If burn before is in place, solar pain flips each hero. Solar Plane is not inflict, uh, villain steams instead. And then our Crisis card. So yeah, so that one's definitely a little bit different. And then we have our Miscellaneous Divider, and our 
player icon cards or our uh, game realm cards. Um, yeah, so very interesting, different setup for stuff. Um, that was this issue, which again, I'll remind you, is a Kickstarter exclusive set. So if you're looking for this, um, he watches and enjoys what's in there. You find that might be some interesting villains or heroes or whatever to play as. You definitely pick it up. A little bit more complex stuff to do. Um, but should be fun. Alright, see you guys in the next videos. Bye.